I'm getting on to talk about teaching our children good touch and bad touch. And please do not teach your children to... If somebody asks them to touch them, to give them permission to touch them, no, you need to state, if somebody asks you to touch you and I am not present, you need to say no. And then you need to tell mommy or daddy that this person asked that. We need to stop teaching our children Somebody needs to ask you permission to touch you. I do understand the statement, but people manipulate that, including children. I must have been coming up in the era when that happened because I would be playing in the neighborhood, in the clubhouse, and the kids asked to touch me, and I didn't know what that meant, so... I was like, yeah, they didn't hurt me, but they fondled my chest area. They fondled my vagina, stuck their fingers in it. I didn't know what they were doing, and they weren't hurting me, and you were always taught if someone is hurting you, you need to tell someone. No, you're not being You're not being hurt, so why am I going to tell you? I'm not being hurt. They're not sticking objects in there. They were just touching. They were curious, and they let me touch them, and I didn't know why I was touching them. Yes, their penis. I was touching their penis. Put their penis in my mouth. Four years old, five years old, six years old. They were just the neighbor kids. <laughs> neighbor kids, that we were all kids touching each other. But I didn't realize that's what they were doing. They are, you know, we're kids, we're innocent. We're just learning one another. They were all older than me. I was the youngest. I was just a little, little one, falling on the kids, playing with the kids, playing tag. We played, you know, freeze tag, hide and go seek, climbing in trees. And I had the older kids ask if they could touch me. I didn't know what that meant. Sure, yeah, you can touch me. And then when they touched me, I didn't really like it, but I already gave them permission to touch me. So, I mean, like I said, they didn't hurt me. Didn't make me feel very I didn't feel, I, I didn't feel like I was in trouble. I just didn't know what was going on. I know now. We need to teach our children that nobody should be touching their private areas. And we need to teach them the, label it correctly, their penis, their vagina, their breasts, all three. Don't teach cookie or pecker or pickle because if a child is getting touched in those areas and then you think they're actually, when they try to come to you for help and they say that, you don't, they, it's not the right thing. So you may not be taking it the way they need you to understand. Children are children. They're not to be exploited. There are books out there that teach them good touch, bad touch. There's also people out there that do hurt you. I was never one of those kids that was ever bullied. I mean, I'm... If anything, I was probably the bullier. I didn't tolerate people. I didn't let people pick on me. I... I had five cousins that were boys. They were I was always around them. And they were always mean. They all wrestled and I was able to take care of myself. My dad taught me, you know, my head, use my head, my elbow and your knee. 
And I always used my head, if I needed to get away, and I knew my head would hurt real bad if it came to your nose. So he always taught me self um, I forgot what it's called, self, hmm. protection, to protect myself, it will come to me, it's right now I'm too emotional, I am no emotional, you know, we have to teach our children to love their bodies, that it's sacred, it's theirs, no one should be touching it. Nobody should be fondling it or playing with it. You know. Tell them that there are bad people out there that will exploit their body in a bad way. That they don't need to be giving their body in that way. That it's their body. They should love their body. And only give it to somebody that they love very dearly. And see, that's really hard to say, too, because, you know, you love your mom, you love your dad. And I know moms and dads both molest their children. They hurt their children. You want to protect your children. But you have to educate your children. But they really need to know about good touch, bad touch. They need to know that their body is their body. They shouldn't be sharing it with anybody. You know, I was so scared that I wouldn't get to choose when I gave my body to somebody. So the first opportunity that it came to me that I could choose, I gave it to them. Because I didn't want to take it. I was 13 years old. Sex Sex can be fun. Sex can be amazing. But sex should never be tormented to a child. It messes with them. It still messes with me. And it makes me angry out here how all these men manipulate women. But everything in our society is programming all about sex or food or restaurants. Peak, whatever that damn restaurant is. Then there's Hooters. Twin Peaks, that's what it is. Then Hooters. Everything is, then you got all these strip malls, and then you got the sex toys. And, you know, sex can be fun, it can be exciting, but it shouldn't be a lifestyle. I don't know when enough is enough. I don't know why people think sexualizing a man or sexualizing a woman is okay. We're not meat. We weren't meant to be devoured. We were meant to be cherished and loved and adored. And just because you're not hurting somebody when you're having sex with them doesn't mean it doesn't hurt them. It does. It hurts them deep to the core of their value. You're devaluing them as a person because you don't love them. You're not trying to get to know them. You're just having sex with them and getting off and not even trying to get to know them as a person, as a being, as a lover, as a You know, I don't understand how you can even look at a child 
in that sexual, I mean, how evil are you? How can you look at a child and do that? You know, I understand children are curious, but they don't become curious until some fucking adult touched them. Or they may, adult, may two children experiment with each other. And then that activated this gene of sexual desire now. And they don't know how to control it. They just know they have this need now because somebody manipulated it and opened it and triggered it. And now they want it. I have so many negative memories of sexual touch. I was six years old when I gave six guys head in a tent. Six years old. I was six. I didn't know what I was doing. I just did it. No child should be exploited in that way. I'm not going to lie, they were all kids themselves. But I still did it. They asked me to do it, and I did it. And I was six. I don't tell people this stuff because it still hurts. Because I still am working through it. And I keep thinking that I don't need to work through it. But I do. And I'm trying. But I was six years old. I didn't know I was doing anything wrong. I wasn't hurting anybody. So when I turned eight and my dad molested me, it was already programmed into my head that that's what women were for. They don't have to love me to touch me. They don't have to love me to need me. I was eight years old when my dad touched me. I was sleeping. I was sleeping. And he came into my bedroom. First, he tried to touch my sister, and she just pushed him off of her. And then after she pushed him off of her, he came over to me. Again, my daddy didn't hurt me. He was just touching me, kissing me down there. I didn't understand what was going on. I mean, I, I knew it was something that helped him because that's what... I was having done to me by my cousins. And you know, when I told on my dad, they, my cousin, he looked at me and he said, are you going to tell on me too? I don't know which hurt worse. Because truthfully, I went in there to tell on him, not my dad. He had hurt me. He was climbing in a tree. And he pushed me out of the tree. And I fell to the ground. And I was little. I went in there to tell on him. And he pushed me out of the tree because I wouldn't give him what he wanted. Which was a blowjob. I told him, no, I don't want to. And he pushed me out of the tree. And I fell. I hit the ground. I went inside. And I went to tell on him. And I told on my dad. I don't I still don't understand that to this day why I told on my dad, but I told on my dad. I kind of do know. My mom was there. And since my mom wasn't really in my life, I really wanted my mom and I thought if I could live with my mom, my life would get better. But it didn't get better.
You know, our children are meant to be protected. And all I can think of, really, this is what life is about? I didn't really feel protected. I really didn't feel loved. I've always talked, I've always told my story. I don't tell all of my story, because some of it's just too hard to share sometimes. But I'm sharing today, because, you know, it's time. It's time to let go. It's time for me to heal. It's time to figure shit out, I guess. And if I can protect somebody else's kid... From somebody else's kid. I'd rather be able to do that. Because you know. It doesn't usually always start. By an adult messing with your kid. Sometimes it's another kid messing with your kid. Sometimes it's just curiosity. They're just playing around. They're touching each other. Feeling what theirs feels like. Kids are innocent. They're pure. They're not meant to be manipulated. They're not meant to be abused. They're not meant to be sex slaves. They're not meant to be a toy for somebody to manipulate. You know, my biggest thankful is that I wasn't hurt. I was never hurt. I was never hurt. I just knew I was tired of fighting. Of protecting of something I didn't even understand what the hell it was about. I just knew I was a girl. I had something that people wanted. That was in between my legs. But boys are exploited just as much as girls are. And I found out much later in my life that the reason my cousin started molesting me was because my uncle was allowing him and my other cousin to have sex with his wife and him. Yeah. Two adults brought two young children into their sex life. Because I was, like I said... He started touching me around when I was three, but he really didn't start really touching, touching me until I was around six, five or six, and then he started getting me to touch him between five and six, really about six, and he was only three years older than me, seven, eight, nine, that means he was nine years old. And he was my cousin. And the more people I talk to, a lot of their cousins will molest them or touch them or make them touch them. I was very protected of my son when I got older. When I had a kid, I was like, nothing's going to happen to him. I kept him by my side. I didn't let him go to other people's houses. I didn't let him do a lot of things. He thought I was a mean mom. I didn't care. I was okay with him thinking I was a mean mom. I was trying to protect him. I wanted him to give his body away when he was ready, not when somebody thought they were ready or he they felt he was ready. But they do make books, and I did want to get on here. I will share the um, webpage in the uh, description below about positive touch, good touch, bad touch. Um, they also have about emotions, how to help them work through their emotions, and 
express their emotions. You know, I try to teach my son to write a lot. That would help him because, you know, I didn't speak well. I don't communicate well. I never have communicated well. I'm still working on it. My son is still always telling, Mom, your tone. Mom, your tone. <laughs> I'm working on my tone still. Um, but I want people, please don't teach your children that somebody has to ask them to touch them. You need to be more, you need to explain that nobody should be touching your penis. Nobody should be touching your vagina. And literally use those things. And for your little girl, say, your chest. Nobody should be touching your chest. No, somebody should be exploiting your body in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable. And if anyone ever comes to you in this manner, you need to tell mommy. You need to tell daddy. doesn't matter who it is. It's most definitely if they ask to touch you. And then they touch you, and they say, oh, please, you can't tell nobody. This is between me and you. Make sure they know that that is not okay. To educate our kids. We have to educate our kids and protect our children. There is evil still out there that exists. And until it doesn't, and we don't have to teach our children, I pray that we won't have to do this forever. But I'm 46, and we still have to teach them. I love you guys. But to protect our babies, we have to teach them and help them be. If we see something that doesn't, that somebody else is doing, we need to step in and correct that behavior. If I ever see something from somebody that's ever doing it, they probably won't be alive. So I'm not that person. I'm not going to keep you alive. That baby's not, may, may not be my baby, but it's still my baby. I look at that child as my child. And there, I pray somebody still sees my child as their child. Because that's how this society needs to start acting like. We need to start seeing as that child is my child, their child is my child. We all start reflecting this and saving each other. And helping each other. Serving each other. Being who we all need in the moment that we need somebody. I'm sorry I'm emotional today. But I am. This has always been a touchy subject for me. Because I know what evil is out there. And just because you asked doesn't mean you're not evil. You're still evil. You're evil for even looking at a child in a sexual manner. You're evil for even allowing that thought to even process. And then you acted on it. And trust me, if you ever cross my path, you'll be a thing of the past. Because I won't be scared to kill you. Because you don't deserve to breathe. And that's my true, ultimate feelings. I even told my very father that. I told him he didn't deserve to breathe. But the only reason I couldn't kill him is because the person that I loved was the sober person. And I loved that man. I didn't like the alcoholic. I didn't go around the alcoholic. The alcoholic wasn't allowed around me. I don't have anything else to say now, so. I love y'all. <sighs> Please. Love your children. Teach them. Be the teacher that they need. Nobody looks like a predator. They always look like normal people. They all look nice and sweet and innocent. Keep that in mind. I love Yara. Bye.